welcome to a new video but before we get into the video i would like to take a moment to thank my channel members whose names are appearing on screen now from next month i will have a new intro i will film some new footage of the dogs and the cats in their new environment just bear with me i just need to get some footage together however if you wish to become a channel member and support the channel you can do so by clicking the link in the description the first tier will get your name on screen at the beginning of reaction videos the second tier will get your name on screen plus you will have access to bi-weekly members only live streams and the third tier will get you both of those things as well as a members only video on the weeks where there is no a live stream these videos are usually life updates or get ready with me today videos sometimes they're cooking videos it's it's a bit of everything really you don't have to become a member you can also support the channel by sending a super thanks or by simply liking commenting and subscribing now that that is out of the way let's get into the video hey guys what's up and welcome back to the channel my name is Ilona I'm also on Chicago Transformations I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder and today we're going to look at the fat liberation hashtag on TikTok and see what that's all about basically I figured like let's look look at some TikToks I've got some time spare I'm not sure when you're going to see this video probably at some point later this week it's Saturday morning here now but uh, I'm going to just do some pre-recording because I have the time and uh, yeah I figured we'll look at some TikToks because why not there's always something interesting to find on TikTok. It's a very vast world out there. So basically, let's get into it. If you are ever curious to see what I do with my day-to-day -day life, my vlogging, uh, training, eating, all of that, I vlog that a couple of times a week. Um, I'm not very much into the diet culture of like extreme deficits. I have a coach, I eat a lot of food. When I'm in my off-season and I'm not prepping for a show, I like to eat quite varied as well. So. Yeah, if you're curious to see all of that, animals, then be sure, be sure to check out the various vlog playlists that I have on my channel. But for now, let's get into this and let's see what there is in TikTok. Born alone and you die alone and this world just drops a bunch of rules on top of you to make you forget those facts, but I never forget. Point of view, you just ask your skinny friends to not call themselves fat in front of you. I mean, it is annoying when people do that though. Especially if somebody's like, it's like when people are like basically fishing for compliments, you know what I mean? It's like, oh no, you're not fat. Or when people sit there and they're like, oh, I'm so ugly today. Or like, oh, this and this. And it's like, you're just fishing for compliments and it's kind of annoying. I agree with that. Yeah, especially if you're not fat. But yeah, it is annoying. There are some people who don't know what hogging is, so let's talk about it. In talk. Okay, hogging. I've never heard of that before. What is it? There are some people who don't know what hogging is, so let's talk about it. In talking about it, I highly recommend you look up research written by Ariane Prohaska and Janine Gailey. They have written multiple articles and book chapters about hogging and the different interactions it has on our lives and oppressive structures. In a way, so playing devil's advocate, so it's funny with how, look, obviously clearly it's to do with um, guys basically just have, sleeping with fat, like sleeping with big girls, just to make it like a notch on their belt, to make ticket to be a tick of their box to say that it's something that they have done. But on the counter argument of that, is like, aren't they always arguing about people basically not wanting to date them or not wanting to go out with them? So the fact that they're trying to do that isn't that like a good thing in a way because they're sleeping with them, but i have other things to say about this because it, this will apply to me to some degree as well not because i'm big but we'll get to it so hogging is a practice in which men typically will prey on fat women and make bets with their friends about finding the fattest and most unattractive woman that they can find and having sex with her sometimes they will then in the completion of having sex with her have the entire group of men come barging in the room and they'll start honking or oinking and harassing that's sick that is really disgusting behavior if guys do this. This must be like a fraternity thing, right? I can't imagine that this is just like well-adjusted, mature male behavior. This is something that fucking teenage, not teenage boys, but like college boys or whatever age you are you, when you do, when you're in a dorm. This sounds like a fraternity, like induction, like a hazing thing. This does not sound like the behavior of just normal dudes. Well-adjusted males, like, I'm sorry. That's really horrible. That's really, really nasty for people to do that. 
the woman until she leaves that space. Uh, it's that guy at bars who picks up a fat girl at last call, but worse because they're actively doing it from the moment that they're sober for the purpose of embarrassing and doing harm onto that person. The secondary part of it is when men are in a sexual slump, they'll fuck fat women to get out of it. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty horrible. But at the same time, like, look, if a guy sleeps with a fat girl, uh, just because I want to try it out, like, you don't know until you try something, right? So maybe, like, that argument I, I kind of disagree with, because I think, like, sometimes maybe, like, how are they supposed to know? Maybe they think they don't like sleeping with big girls because they have, they think they don't, but maybe they'll do it and, like, wow, well, actually, this is really nice. In terms of, like, that process of just coming into the room and uh, embarrassing the girl i think that's really disgusting um like it doesn't matter who's being done but like that's really really disgusting behavior i cannot tr even try and justify that but in terms of guys just doing things for the sake of trying it out I, it happens to me like uh, i get it quite a lot that guys are interested in me because i'm different and a lot of guys are curious to know what it's like to like fuck a muscle chick, basically. So this is why yeah, uh, dating can be a bit tricky sometimes. And like granted, my experience is not quite the same because it's not like I'm being embarrassed by guys for it. But a lot of guys are curious because I'm like an exotic creature to them. And you know, so it's, it's, it is annoying when you start talking to people and they're like, oh, you're actually quite intelligent or you're quite, you, you know, there's more to you. It's like, oh yeah, I have more to me than just being a fucking buff chick with tattoos. But at the same time, I know that I look quite, I look exotic. I am different. I am a tall redhead with tattoos and I'm very muscular. So like, obviously guys might not be into muscle chicks but they may be a bit like oh i wouldn't mind trying that out see what that's all about so you just have to learn to discern between people's intentions and be honest with people and like i you learn if you start dating you do it regularly you talk a lot to different people from different walks of life you learn quickly whether or not um somebody is just out to try and be with you for a curiosity or whether they're interested in you as a person and another good thing by doing that is maybe don't put out so quickly, you know? Like, if you don't put out so quickly, then is, is a guy willing to work for it? If he's not, then you know exactly where you stand and what he was after. So, but yeah, this walking thing sounds fucking disgusting. I'm wearing shorts on. <laughs> Better. I didn't really understand what was going on there for a second. Oh, poor girl. Just wear a bra, love. You'll be fine. If I didn't have implants, my titties would be like hanging down low as well. Well, I wouldn't have any tits, to be fair. I would have like two, two little tea bags. We're a size 6X and am an oxygen user. If I can fly, you can too. Don't let anyone hold you back. I Look, nothing wrong with her wanting to fly. Um, nothing is you should be proud of having to use oxygen and being a size 6x because you're probably using oxygen because of the fact that you're big the chance the, the probabilities are high of that nothing wrong with that but look just um this is going to be very fat phobic of me to say but i hope she's bought two seats because you can see she's clearly taking up two spaces and if i was to be in that middle seat there i would not be happy if somebody was like invading on my personal space airplane seats are small enough as they are which maybe you could argue is not great and like maybe that in itself is fat phobic but for me if I've purchased a space on public transport that's I want that space <laughs> all for me and I don't want to share it with a stranger that I don't know and I definitely certainly do not want to have other people's body parts touching mine like no no thank you um but no like obviously if you want to fly fly just make sure that if you're going to go on long haul flights so you're so big that you've got the right compression gear that you get up and move that you've got all the right medication that you don't get blood clots because stuff like that does i mean it can happen to anybody especially on long flight but when you're bigger obviously usually speaking the arteries things aren't flowing as easily usually speaking because of poor diet there is issues with cholesterol and stuff like that so just be mindful of um yeah deep vein thrombosis and stuff like that if you go flying as a bigger person skinny shaming is not the same as fat shaming one is bullying the other one is systematic oppression and discrimination i would say it's more prejudices 
discrimination, I suppose she can discriminate. Like, I'm sure that, it, to be fair, like, I'm sure, like, big people do get discriminated against. The systematic oppression, I don't know about if I agree with that. But discrimination, yeah, I think that happens. But I think a lot of it can be logically explained as well. Hi, so I just want to walk you through my day of eating as a fat person. So I woke up at about 9 o'clock in the morning, then I decided to digest the entire fucking kitchen. You know, I sat and I ate my very large portions. Then, you know, I sat and... I, I, I think she's being a little bit sarcastic because like that portion wasn't so bad actually. It was alright. It's like a decent-ish breakfast. I contemplated will die. It's a little bit processed though with the hash brown and the patty, but it wasn't overly bad. Domination as a fat person. How can I continue to promote obesity? And then after I gave my dog a bath, we sat and discussed. Look at that cute little face. Just how to make everybody else in the world as fat as I am. And then. Yo, but this is like really bad though. Look at that. This is like a fucking terrible meal. Oh my god, and the amount of fried food as well. Like, look, don't get me wrong. I do. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I don't like fried food. I like fried food too. But I don't know if I could sit there and eat a whole plate like that though. First of all, that would upset my stomach for the rest of the day. If I ate that, I would have the fucking worst indigestion and heartburn all day. Uh, and that will be repeating on me for at least like a lot longer after that. But yeah, that's this is bad. This is not good. And now it's lunchtime, so I had to eat my kitchen again. As I sat and I wrote a paper about how important it is to promote obesity. And then I had to go to somebody else's house to get a snack. You know, I had to eat their kitchen too. And then because. I mean, she was being sarcastic, but I'm not being in with uh, like eat the whole kitchen. But that's that lunch she had was a fucking big old lunch. That was a lot of food, and it really, really is quite unhealthy. Like I, I, I don't know this girl because I don't follow her, but that lunch was terrible, like really bad. Because two kitchen wasn't enough, I went to an all you can eat buffet and I ate that shit too. And then after a long day of promoting obesity and feeding my fat ass face, I retired for the night. Hi, so I mean the sub wasn't so bad. The sub, um, you can make a sub fairly easy, but that lunch though, oof. She could have done with like maybe some greenery in there, or at least like cut the portion in half or something. So, the boob in the second boob area. That is from sucking in your stomach. When I was a child, my mother made me hold in my stomach all the time for pictures, even just like walking around, like, because I was a fat kid. And oh my god, this is the boob in the. Yeah, that's really unhealthy behavior of a parent to do that to a child. I'm saying you're not deserving if you're obese. You okay. don't deserve a guy that makes six figures if you're obese. I don't... First of all, I want to know which big bitch stole her man. <laughs> Second of all, coming real close for this one. We deserve the rich men more. <laughs> right? What does it matter how much a guy earns? Like, don't get me wrong, I couldn't go out with a guy that... I like men that are ambitious and hardworking because I'm hardworking myself and I couldn't be with somebody that doesn't match my values and my outlook on life and my drive and all of that it's like I couldn't be with somebody for example that is um, obese because of the fact that like my lifestyle is very much tied into being healthy and fit and exercising and eating certain things and like it's my life like I love it so b being with somebody that doesn't lead that life is going to be very hard but um in terms of saying like the the money earned like i don't know it's I, I never if i go on a date i never ask how much a guy earns i kind of ask what he does for a living and that usually by talking to them as well as um but just the way they are able to hold conversation their attitude their auras and all of that i don't mean physically the aura but like the way they carry themselves and uh, the job that they do i can tell fairly easily whether or not they are earning a good salary or not it's not that hard to figure out because our clothes are more expensive. We eat more. Our grocery bills are higher. We're just so fat and lazy that like, we literally like never work. And we need a nice rich sugar daddy to buy us everything that we need. And like, we're so big that like, sometimes we have to buy two airplane tickets. <laughs> she's kind of not, she's not lying, no way. <laughs> and who's gonna do that? A rich, rich daddy is. Rich man. You skinny bitches can buy your clothes in the kids section of Walmart. Meanwhile, have you ever tried to buy a t-shirt from Torrid? From Torrid? So if anything, those six-figure men, we're more deserving than you are. I don't know, I'm gonna like this TikTok because she was funny and she's right. 
<laughs> oh, really? So what's she saying? Y'all make this trend to exclude larger fat women. Me bullying it anyway. Oh, I don't understand. Friendly reminder that you do not need to lose weight to do anything that you want to do in life. Sometimes my friends will hit me up and like want to go try new restaurants, especially in the summer months so we can just go chill on a patio, have some drinks. Um, and I always have to Google the establishments and look at their seating just to make sure that it will actually accommodate me. And most like, look, it is really sad that somebody's in a position where they have to Google in advance if they can physically fit somewhere to eat beforehand but at the same time it's like look if you put yourself if you get to the point where you're so big that you can't fit into normal seats anymore then you can't expect the whole world to change around you um, and it sounds horrible and like obviously it's different if you've got like like different disabilities and stuff like that but the thing is is that like your body fat is something you can control and granted it's a lot harder for some people than others i will never deny that but equally, it's like, that is like, you know, if you get to the point where just the standard sizings of things don't apply to you anymore, then, I don't know, it'd be, it kind of becomes a you problem, eh? Unfortunately, you know, that's not being mean, but that's just the reality of it. Like how, if you're so, like, seats usually kind of, kind of accommodate up to like a pretty large size. So if you fall out that, then you need to really start thinking about doing something about your health, really. Most of the time it doesn't, especially booths and the patio chairs with like the little sidearm things. Last weekend, I actually went swimming with my sister and her kids and my nephew kept asking me like, Auntie, won't you go on the slide with me? And I had to explain to him. I mean, slides as well. Like I think most adults would struggle going on to slide now. Slides are for kids, obviously like. Me and my fucking big booty ain't gonna fucking feel on the slide. I don't even want to try it anyway. Plus, slides are scary. Especially the ones that are covered in like water parks. Are you crazy? I'm not going in a slide. No, thank you. I value my life. And that they weren't gonna let me go on the slide because of my weight. Today, a TikTok creator actually unlocked a new fear for me, which is the idea of like if I was ever flying and traveling for like a vacation or something and I were to lose my luggage, that I'd be totally fucked because. Most places, like 99% of places, don't carry anything large enough to fit me. Um, so I'd just be like wearing the same outfit for the entirety of my trip. Yeah, but that again is like, it's annoying anyway if you lose your suitcase at the best of times. And like, granted, I get what she's saying. Other people could just walk into a shop and buy some cheap outfits or some, you know, maybe not necessarily cheap, but could buy some outfits. But then again, that's just like a you problem. If you can't go into most stores to buy clothes that's because you fall outside the size, that's like... It's down to you to fix it, isn't it? Um, I've been denied medical care and procedures before because of my weight. I think looping back around to like the original video here, um, there's plenty of things that I would like to do, but I can't because of my weight. And I think the most important takeaway here is the fact that these are things that I shouldn't be prevented from doing that I shouldn't be able to do um, this is very much just society no it's not I'm sorry but if you are so big that you can't sit on normal chairs or you can't buy clothes in most shops and you fall outside the norm and if you fall outside the norm then you can't expect the world to change for you like it doesn't work like that I know for myself, like, yeah, granted, I can buy clothes in certain shops, but I'm also an awkward body shape. I'm also an awkward size. Like, it's not easy for me to buy clothes. It either has to be, like, it, all my clothes has to be very stretchy materials. And, like, grant, I will admit that the way I look is socially far more acceptable. And my body type is kind of almost more uh, preferred in this day and age, especially with, like, the uprise of, like, fucking muscular or, like, big booties and stuff like that. Like, it's becoming popular to be thick um through the lower body so you know i get it but that doesn't mean that it's like i am making a conscious decision to look a certain way 
So I also need to be very aware of the fact that if I am different from the norm, that means that I can't just go into H&M and buy just a pair of jeans because a pair of jeans ain't gonna fucking fit me. Like it's gonna be enormous on my waist and it's gonna be too tight on my legs. So I, it's just, it's just the way it is. Like you have to, you can't expect the world to change for you. You need to adapt to the world within reason. And that doesn't mean that people shouldn't change their views on things or people shouldn't become more open-minded and more understanding. Of course, like I'm, I'm all for that. Like uh, I think this is a part of human development, but also you have to understand that biz like a lot of these places are businesses and the businesses are out to make the most money possible. And unfortunately you are not the money grabbing demographic. The demographic is the average, the normal. And that's just how it is. Yeah. Um, not acknowledging uh, my existence basically and just how much fat people are, are just kind of an afterthought so yeah anyway I'm gonna go just a quick one guys uh, insert a I don't know what kind of emoji to do in today what did we, what did we watch an airplane emoji why not comment like subscribe dislike the video if you disliked it let me know down below why and i'll see you in the next video bye guys